So it's a measure of spread different to standard deviation. So if the middle 50% is very, very close together, then the data isn't that spread out. Is the idea. Now we have <coughs> 60 data points. So you're looking for the 30 in the middle. <coughs> So what you do is you go from the bottom 25% to the top 25% and you find the difference between them. So you go from n over 4, which would be 15, go across, go down, this is what we call Q1. So that's like the median, but it's not separating the small 50% from the big 50%. It's separating the small 25% from everything else. Small 25%. Like similarly, you can do things like the, the small 10% or the top 10%. So that's the Q1. Now the Q3, you go up to um, 3 quarters, which would be 45. Go across, go down, and this is what's called Q3, and so here you have the top 25%. And your interquartile range is the difference between them. If you've graph paper, this would be a lot easier, so uh, equal to Q3 minus Q1, Q3 era, oof, let's say that's about a quarter of the way. Uh, we're just making up at this point, point 0.7, are they, are they 0.5 wide? So maybe that's a fifth, let's say, to make it easier, so 0 0.705. Easier with graph paper, nicer numbers, you are getting nicer numbers. Minus, uh, the other one, let's say it's halfway which would be something like 0.62. So 0 0.085. So that's the difference between the top 25% and the bottom 25%. If that's small, the data, well, certainly around the middle, is not that spread out. The median, then, is not the midpoint of those two. But you go to Turkey, and down, maybe we'll just do it in a different color. It's not asked for here, but we'll throw it in. So the median, you go to the n over 2. This here is the median. So it's how wide is the middle 50 percent? Which is quite narrow, so that tells us most of the data that is close to so. say, say that again? Like that figure one? Yeah, yeah, well it's... It's not making much it's sense. 35 percent, 75 percent, so... Yeah, the middle 50 percent. So like, with income you take Say the, the, the bot, bottom 25% might be 25,000, something like that. And say the top 25%, I don't know, might be 80,000. So you've got that spread of whatever, 50 odd thousand between the bottom 25% and the top. In a, a place where there's a bit more equality, the, the, the bottom number will be bigger and the top number might be smaller. So that, that is less spread out. Uh, something like that. Okay, the next question here, uh, this one by the way, didn't look for any histogram, but funny enough, a little picture helps. So the next thing is set up a table indicating the class marks. You're not going to get anything like that, right? It's, it'll just say the second bit. So the class marks was the way the questions were written was all confusing. You had to find all the midpoints, but that's going to be more obvious for you. So use only the assumed mean method to determine the mean and standard deviation. Now here, because it's a sample, it said it's a sample, it's some of the data. We have the sample statistics. I mean, if I was to teach anything out of this, that would be the idea that the sample mean, this yoke, approximates the population mean. It gets the answer correct on average. And this thing, the sample standard deviation, 
approximates the population standard deviation. Now, uh, in different ways, this one is right on average, this isn't, but it's a good guess. Now, uh, this data is relatively a little bit symmetric. Small, medium, big, biggest. So it makes sense to make this the assumed mean. If you run with 0 0.72 <laughs> is the only other option, that's okay. Now again, these numbers are the midpoints. You're going to have nicer things. I think it's 0 to 10. So you're going to have um, your assumed mean, say, maybe something similar. It might be 25. It has to be the midpoint. That's the only thing. We we used the population in the, the last question we did and the sample. Because there was no, in the if the question was completely abstract. There was no. It was the assumed mean method to determine. Well, if you look at the question overall, there was no suggestion it was a sample. Right. If it is a sample, you will try and use this. Um, if you it, on the previous question, if you could use sample as well, that would be perfectly correct. In this one, it would be slightly wrong to use the population. I wouldn't dock the mark. It wouldn't make sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the ta yes, so yeah, I'm just going to leave the table there for a second. So again, you need to understand from the formulas you get the tables, and because you figure out what you need, I need f. There it is. I need d. There it is. I need f by d. I need d squared. I need f d squared. Any questions about the table there? Let's take a second. Where do get d from now? So d is it's saying how far away are you from where you think the mean is. So this is on the money. So this is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Uh, any more questions on That's how many bins away, yeah? How many bins away, but allow them to be negative. So you start with x and f, then you throw in d, f by d, d squared, f by d squared. And then the sigma means add them up. The f there, like, it's always the f of the, the first table they have there, yeah? not the um, cumulative frequency there. Yeah, yeah, it'll always be, yeah. You can actually, can we give, well, yeah, it'll, in this, no, it'll always be the f. You could work backwards, but we're not, we're not doing that. So you're saying, could the f be the, the f that we did with less x, less than x, no, we'll always give you x with f. All right, so off we go. So we got x bar is equal to a, which is 0 0.67, plus c, what's c here? 0.05. Uh, 0.05. So c is the width. So the difference is, so it'll be easier, and as I said, in the numbers we get, oh, it's 10. Add up the f by d. I get minus 10, add up the F, I get 60. Zero point six six one seven. Four significant figures if you can. And notice it's a little less because, well, the reason is, okay, there's four extra data points here, but see there's four more over here and four less here. So that's kind of, kind of balancing itself out. Not quite, but kind of. But there's more data back here, so that's skewing it more left. You've got more data points here than here. And the other formula, S equal to C, which is 0 0.05 square root. Uh, add up the f by d squared, that's 108. Add up the f minus 1, 60 minus 1. Minus add up the f, that's 60. Over add up the f minus 1, 60 minus 1. Add up the f by d, that's minus 10. Over add up the f is 60 squared. You know, like you have f minus 1, the sum of f minus 1. Yeah. Is it all, like, is it you do the sum of f and then minus 1? Yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is ambiguous, you're right. 3 minus 1, 8 minus no, 1. No, it's, it's add up all the f, take that one. 
So if you go back, actually, if you look at it, it you'll probably, so that, that's actually a good question because all the other ones, there, there, isn't, there is a proper way to interpret them. That one you actually could interpret wrong and it wouldn't really be your fault. But there's a tables on page 161 and it doesn't really help you, sorry. Um, but the, the sample standard deviation, so you know like when you're doing the mean, you divide by the number of numbers. So to add up F makes sense. Now the sample standard deviation, it turns out a good correction is instead of the number of numbers, to the number of numbers minus one. So that's that's why it is. In the form on its own, you're, it is ambiguous, you're right. Um, but it is like this, it's 60 minus one, not uh, the other way. So that's four significant figures. I think there's handy marks then at the end of it. Um, or the mode. Okay, so the other questions are calculate the mode, calculate the coefficient of variation, calculate the coefficient of skewness. So in the mode we have a formula. Now you don't actually, you, you don't have a histogram here, uh, but we'll draw just a tiny one about the mode. So just the, the important bit. So you have, the biggest one is around 0.67. So the, the biggest one, so it goes from 0.645 to 0.695. So the mode, remember, is where the peak is. And that's just 20 in there, so that's where the mode is. Okay. The only other numbers we need are the, so the L, this is going to be the LM. Now we just look at the heights of the adjacent ones. We've got 10 and we've got 14. And I've kind of drawn it a bit funny, but. So this is four, this is 10, this is 20, and this is 14. I should have made the bottom smaller and the top bigger, but anyway. So L is the, the jump on the left. What's the jump on the left? 10. 10. And the jump on the right? Six. So there your L, little L and little U. So the mode, so the lower limit of the model class is 0 0.645, plus the C is the width, 0 0.05, the L is the lower jump, which is 10, and the L plus U is 10 plus 6. Sorry, my farm here as well. Six, seven, six, three. And it, it has to be between the two of those. That's where you put the pieces. The rest of it then is just banging in numbers. So everything else is calculated previously. So the coefficient of very variation is S, which we calculated as uh, 0 0.06712 over X bar, which is uh, 6617 by 100%. So saying how much of the data is taken up with this deviation, 0 0.06712 divided by 6617 at uh, 10.14%. So that means overall the data is actually looks pretty uh, peaky. 
pinky, if you drew it all out. And then the coefficient of skewness. So now this should be pretty small. We don't have, it's actually these numbers are a bit harder to understand without the histogram, but the data is fairly symmetric. There's not going to be a whole <coughs> lot of difference in the mean and the mode because it's fairly symmetric. So this number should be small, but we don't really understand uh, what was too big, is too small, or something like that. So we're just kind of hang in the numbers. The important thing is, is it positive or negative? So the mean, points zero, sorry, excuse me, point six six one seven. The mode, 0 0.6763. So the mean is smaller. That means there's kind of more data way down on the left, skewing it left, making the mean smaller than it should be. Or the S is the sample standard deviation, 0 0.06712. Banging into the calculator. minus 0 0.2175 so this means negatively skewed i.e. to the left to draw the standard deviation and the mean when you put them in yeah that's it there are ones you that but it's, it's and Um, uh, we'll do a bit of this in the maple now. Uh, if people want to start the maple fast, I, ha I can't. I have to wait because I have to do some stuff on the board. Because um, the instructions in the lab aren't perfectly clear. So if you want to start early, I'm afraid you'll have to wait. Uh, we'll try and come back at uh, 20 to 9. Um, this, will, this question will be something you will revise. Maybe we'll do some now. We will have revision in week 13. This is one of the easy questions. How many marks is this question? Is so it's 25% of the exam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 